Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. France is our oldest ally, our unwavering partner in freedom's cause. President Macron and the United States could not ask for a better partner than France. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in raising our glasses to President Macron and his wife Brigitte, to the history that binds us and the future we're going to forge together. Viva la France and God bless America. Welcome back. After France gave America the original Statue of Liberty back in 1885, they're about to give her a little sister. That's right, and she may only be nine feet tall, but she resembles her big sister. Well, at least down to the broken shackles and torch as well. And just like the original Lady Liberty, she'll go on a similar voyage across the Atlantic, all the way to New York. France is sending the gift as a way to re-strengthen the bond between the two countries after a turbulent year of shutdowns and closings. In Daniel 8 verse 12, we read, And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced, and prospered. This came in the form of Clovis, king of the Franks. He was converted to Catholicism in 496 AD, and then went about converting the other pagan nations of Western Europe. This was done through war and capitulations. By 508 AD Clovis and his military strength, exercised on behalf of the papacy, had finished their work in success. Prior to the French Revolution, the Catholic Church had been the official state religion of France since the conversion to Christianity of Clovis, leading to France being called the eldest daughter of the Church. The King of France was known as His Most Christian Majesty. In the book of Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 and 12, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. I saw that the two-horned beast had a dragon's mouth, and that his power was in his head, and that the decree would go out of his mouth. Then I saw the mother of harlots, that the mother was not the daughters, but separate and distinct from them. She has had her day, and it is past, and her daughters, the Protestant sects, were the next to come on the stage and act out the same mind that the mother had when she persecuted the saints. I saw that as the mother has been declining in power, the daughters had been growing, and soon they will exercise the power once exercised by the mother. I'll read a little bit of it. Jesus is praying. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is sleeping. Judas is betraying, but Sunday's coming. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. And it goes through the whole process. And that's how many of us feel or felt in our lives that we were living in Friday. But guess what? Sunday is coming, Rachel. Mm -hmm. And many of you have broken marriages. You've been abandoned by friends. You've been rejected by the world. Look at our country right now. It might feel like Friday, but Sunday Sunday is coming. We've all just gone through COVID. Uh, many people are having financial problems or been diagnosed with a terrible disease or have a sick child, which would be just horrible. But Sunday is coming and Jesus paid the ultimate price on the cross for us and we can be forgiven and we can have hope in a Sunday. This world comes with so much. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share. God bless.